Hi, this is Hector Garcia, and this is going to be a video lesson um, of a class that I normally teach over a few days in a live setting in Miami, Florida, and I've been uh, asked many, many times to make a, an entire video series of, uh, of the live classes. So this is what um, you're going to experience with this uh, video course. Um, I really think you're going to like it. You can follow step by step alongside the screen, uh, pause, and also um, reference a book. I specifically recommend that you work with uh, QuickBooks 2016 Missing Manual, or if it's already 2017, use that one, or 2018, whatever. Um, but use the Missing Manual because it's uh, pretty much the best book out there, and uh, you can buy it on Amazon for like $30 or so, or you can, in some cases, you can download the PDF for free. Uh, depending on how you got access to this course from me, you probably got a copy of the book, whether it's physical or digital, so you can use that as a, as a reference. So uh, the first lesson we're going to do is navigating uh, QuickBooks uh, desktop and setting it up for the first time. So if you're using the QuickBooks 2016 missing manual, that is going to be uh, chapter one, creating a company file, and chapter two, getting around uh, QuickBooks. So let's start the lesson. Enjoy. All right, let's get started with QuickBooks. So right now I have uh, my QuickBooks uh, desktop open. This will be on a Windows machine. I'm working on QuickBooks Enterprise Edition. However, this uh, training will work with QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, QuickBooks Accountant, QuickBooks Enterprise, any version of QuickBooks that gets installed into a uh, Windows machine, it would work in here. So when you first open QuickBooks, you're going to see no company open. Uh, that basically says that QuickBooks is open, but uh, no database or company file. It's open. You're going to see multiple company files here if you happen to be managing multiple uh, companies through QuickBooks. It may also look completely blank if you're opening QuickBooks for the first time. So we're going to create a new company. To create a new company, we're going to click here where it says create new company. And we'll just go ahead and click on that. Then it's going to give us a couple of choices. Uh, the big blue button says Express Start. And if you press that, I will show you that real quick. If you press that, it's going to ask you a few questions, company name, industry, business type, and basically let you move forward. However, if you're starting QuickBooks for the very first time, I recommend that you actually use the Detail Start. Uh, the reason for that is because the Detail Start or the Advanced Setup is going to ask you a set of multiple questions. And these questions are gonna guide you step-by-step step on how you should set up QuickBooks uh, to match your particular business, your particular industry. So let's go ahead and set up a company uh, name here. So we're gonna call this uh, Miami Computers. So we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, like a computer company. And um, we'll put a generic address here. And the idea behind just putting something here, you know, it, this is just kind of a basic training is uh, so we can actually see that address when we create invoices, uh, we should be able to see uh, an, ad an address there. So make it look as uh, as uh, real as possible. Now you can skip tax ID or skip phone number, email, website, you don't need that, but you could go ahead and put it if you're setting up a real company. Then the next question is what industry? Now, this is not extremely important. If you get this wrong, it's not such a big deal. However, QuickBooks is going to customize uh, your chart of accounts and the type of transactions that you work with based on your industry. Now we're working with a company called Miami Computers. This is the sample uh, company we're setting up for this training. And we're gonna find an industry that matches this one the best. So for example, there's this industry here called information technology. That makes sense, it's a computer company, so we're gonna go ahead and pick that. Now one important tip is, if you can't find your industry here, because it is a pretty short list, just scroll all the way down and pick one of the generic ones. There's a general product based, there's a general service based. You can pick either one, you'll be fine with that. For our particular example, we're gonna go ahead and pick information technology. Again, if you can't find your industry, pick one of the general ones. The next question is, how is your company organized? This is kind of a tax question. So how does your um, co company file tax returns? And you're gonna go ahead and pick whether it's a sole proprietorship, a partnership, 
LLC, corporation, etc. If you don't know this, you should ask your accountant. If your accountant doesn't know this, uh, you should change accountants <laughs> or ask um, a lawyer or whoever helped you set up the business. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a S corporation, which is uh, tends to be one of the most uh, typical ones here for a small company. So I'm going to pick S corporation and click next. Then it's asking me for fiscal year. So if you're a regular calendar year company where you start January and December and you file your corporate tax returns on uh, March 15, like uh, like all other corporations or most corporations, uh, rather, you're going to leave January there. But if you happen to close your year, let's say June 30th, um, if that's when you actually close your year, then you're going to pick my fiscal year starts July. Okay, that's what you would pick. But most companies are going to be January to December. So we're going to pick the start month. So we'll click January and then click next. Then I'll ask you to create an, an administrative password. It's good for you to have a password in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a password in there. And, um, you know, if you are setting up the company for the first time, hopefully you are the admin. If not, you know, we're going to have to figure out who the admin is and then create a separate user for yourself. Next question is asking you, where in the computer would you like to save this? Now, if you're working in a multi-user environment where we have a server, multiple computers, that sort of thing, maybe you want to get your IT person involved just because if you save it in the wrong place, it may not work properly in a multi-user network server environment. And also, um, if you, you're not in that environment, but this is set up in maybe your own laptop, don't put it in the desktop because typically in the desktop, you'll be uh, sort of inclined to put it in the trash can or something like that. So uh, put it in a folder where it just makes sense to put it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, uh, let's say, my documents folder and I'll put it under Intuit and I'll create it. I'll put it right there and hit save. Again, you should probably get your IT person involved uh, if you need to really decide what the right place to put this in. When it's finished saving, it's going to say, all right. We're going to go ahead and um, customize uh, QuickBooks to fit your needs. And it's going to ask you a whole series of questions about what type of uh, company you have and what the type of transactions you'll be working with. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. First question is, what do you sell? Products, services, or both? So if you do sell products, inventory, parts, actual um, things that you're selling and exchanging for money, you, you want to pick uh, products. If you do mostly services done by your employees or um, services of renting equipment or renting your facilities, labor, that sort of thing, we're going to pick services. And if you do both, just go ahead and pick both. And we'll click next. Then it's asking, do you charge sales tax? Again, if you sell products, you probably charge sales tax. You may want to ask an accountant, see if uh, the type of products you're selling are taxable or the clients you're selling to, um, you need to charge sales tax. So you may want to ask your accountant, I'm going to pick yes there and then hit next. Then it says, do you create estimates? So if you want to give somebody a quote, a proposal, basically like a pre-invoice, uh, very organized with a total, then you want to pick yes there for estimates. So we'll hit next. Then it says, do you track customer orders? Now for our Sort of our first couple of videos, we're not going to be doing sales orders. So I'm going to go ahead and click no. However, if you are working with QuickBooks Premier, Accountant, or Enterprise, and you have inventory, and you take orders for things you don't have in stock yet, and you want to take that order and then sort of remind you and have a mechanism to go order the product through your vendor, that's what a sales order will be. And then in that case, you would hit yes. But for the first couple of videos I'm going to have here, first couple of lessons uh we're gonna do we're not gonna do sales orders so i'm gonna pick no i'll hit next then it says do you use billing statements basically do you want to give a client a statement uh, monthly quarterly that shows all the payments all the invoices it's like an invoice of invoices okay so it doesn't contain details of the products and services you're selling it contains all your invoices and all your payments so if you want that you would hit yes and then hit next do you use progress invoicing? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to hit no because on this example, company called Miami Computers, we're not going to do a project-based billing or milestone-based billing. However, if you are in the construction industry, if you sell projects that are sort of long-term, if your contract says, you know, the whole thing's 100000 and if you meet condition A, B, and C, 
you can build your first 25 percent and then if you hit meet condition c d and f then you can build another 30 percent that sort of building is called progress invoicing so if you need that you would hit yes there but for the exercises we're going to do we're going to hit no and then we'll hit next then it says do you manage the bills you owe in other words do you want to track accounts payable do you want uh, to put vendor bills that you want to pay later set them in quickbooks now recognize the expense now pay them later track how much money you owe in the future that would be a bill so i'm gonna hit yes because um, i like that feature very much we'll hit next then it says do you track inventory again if you purchase product you stock it you put it in the warehouse you maintain it you make sure that it doesn't break you make sure you don't lose it you count it uh, you adjust inventory if the counts are missing um, then you do track inventory if everything you buy you resell but you never stock in your warehouse it's all basically um, order on demand if if it's if it's sort of uh, uh, small materials that you don't uh, account for you do charge the client for them more or less but not item by item just sort of in a lump sum then possibly you don't track inventory for our example this company called miami computers we are going to use inventory so we're going to hit next then i'll click i mean we'll hit yes and then we'll click next then it says do you track time so that's only if um, i'm going to have time sheets and those time sheets are going to be used to understand how much um, our employees time is worth uh, in each project or maybe i want to generate a paycheck with it or maybe i just want to bill my client the hours that i spend on the project so if you get if any of those apply you're going to hit yes for our couple of examples on this first uh, videos we're not going to track time uh, we're going to have a whole video on payroll and we'll include all the time uh, elements in there so for this example we're going to hit no and then i'll hit next then it says do you have employees again we'll have an entire video series on payroll uh, but for, for this company called Miami Computers, we're going to go ahead and just have uh, subcontractors. So we're going to hit yes on, on 1099 subcontractors, but we're not going to hit uh, yes on W-2 employees. And then we'll hit next. Then it says, okay, we're going to set up your chart of accounts. But before we get there, I, I need to know what your start date is. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then after we settle the whole concept of start date, then it's going to suggest a couple of income and expense accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And the question essentially is, do you want to uh, start your accounting at the beginning of this fiscal year? Like, for example, let's say you're in the middle of July and you're setting up your QuickBooks file. and You're trying to decide uh, whether or not you should uh, go all the way to the beginning of the year. That way, when you close out the year, you sort of have a clean uh years so you can file a tax return and that's very very common but you don't have to um, if you want to just start your accounting today august 1st 2016 and forget about january through july and not really worry too much about the history of the mid-year then you can just pick whatever date you want keep in mind whatever your start date is you're probably going to have to bring all the beginning balances right as of that date beginning bank balances beginning credit card balances loans and we'll talk about that when we talk about the chart of accounts so i'm going to go ahead and pick beginning of the fiscal year because that's the most common especially for companies that have already been open before we started our quickbooks file all right we're going to go ahead and click next then it's going to suggest um accounts based on the categories that based on the options and questions that it asks and these are the categories so we're going to see all the different options here i can Turn, turn them on by hitting the checkbox. I'm going to go ahead and turn on subcontractor expense. I'll turn on uh, business and license and permits, uh, business license and permits. I'm going to leave charity contributions out. Let's say I'm never going to deal with that. Um, let's say equipment rental, we'll turn that one on. And then we'll scroll down. And then we see that insurance expense, it's already suggesting a couple of other insurances. And you see a little gap or a little um, sort of tab there under that. That means these are sub accounts. So this is suggesting a major category called insurance expense, but then it's additionally suggesting other sub categories or sub accounts. So I'm going to pick general liability and health insurance as the two sub accounts. And you're going to see kind of how those look in the chart of accounts briefly on the next lesson. I'm going to keep scrolling down and 
Let me turn on janitorial expense and miscellaneous expense. I'll leave that one out. I hate that account. I find that when uh, somebody has the miscellaneous expense account there, that becomes basically the go-to account for everything. So I typically suggest my clients to leave that one out. I'll turn on postage and delivery. That one's good. Scroll down. Repairs and maintenance. That's pretty good. We'll turn that one on. Uh, property taxes. Let's say they don't have any building so we'll leave that out of the options there and you see a bunch of options there ask my accountant really good leave that one on that way um if you're an accountant and you're setting this up for a client then the client knows to put everything they don't know there and if you're if you're an end user and hopefully you have an accountant and the things you don't know put them there that way once a month or once a quarter however often you meet with your accountant you can review the transactions that went in that category Okay, so once we're done reviewing these, we can hit next. And then it says, congratulations. You can click on go to setup. And the first screen you're gonna see is this uh, QuickBooks setup screen. Now this screen only shows up when you first turn QuickBooks on uh, and, and create a new file. So because I'm never gonna get this screen back, I'm just gonna hit close and we'll create uh, customers, products and bank accounts but we'll do them in their own screens where they're supposed to be going. So I'll click on the little X there or click uh, start working. Now, the first thing you'll see is the home screen. Okay, you're gonna see the home screen there with a whole bunch of icons. We'll get to that in a second. And these icons have arrows are going all over the place. And, and what, what, what really is happening here is QuickBooks is trying to, with each icon, represent a transaction. And each transaction is sort of an accounting event and it's kind of walking you through the typical accounting events that you have. And we'll discuss those uh, later on. Now, the other piece of um, big information you see, uh, other than the icons there, is this big blue uh, bar in the left. Now, this bar can be collapsed by clicking on that little arrow. And then you don't get that anymore. However, what's in here are shortcuts. Um, shortcuts, view balances. I mean, there's a couple of interesting things here. Um, if you don't like this left navigation bar that you can collapse and open, you can just click on the view menu and you can just turn it off by clicking on left navigation bar or you can click on uh, top navigation bar and see that same bar in the top, but it's, um, it's going to be static. So you can't close it and open it. Now, a lot of people like to have these icons there just because they're pretty good shortcuts. However, everything you see on these icons can be also accessed through the menu. So if you don't want any of them at all, just click on hide icon bar and then you won't see a top bar or a left icon bar. Um, I like having at least one, uh, either a top bar or a left icon bar. But if you are going to have the left icon bar, just have it collapsed. And in the shortcuts, just in case, I want to click my shortcuts and have access to the shortcuts there. Now, the other obvious sort of thing here is this little tab here called insights. When you click on insights, um, it's going to show you sort of a a graphical interface, which is sort of a dashboard of uh, my sales, my expenses, and they're good to have. Um, although there's, there's a whole reports menu and a whole dashboard menu, there, it's right there as a tab in the homepage. So just know that that's right there. And once we have more transactions, um, those are going to be pretty obvious there. The other thing is if you be using QuickBooks um, on older versions, typically you're used to um, having the top icon bar like this, and then having this thing called the open window list. So I'm gonna kind of show you what that is. Some people actually prefer that. So basically, if you have multiple windows open, let's say I have a, a bill open, and I also have, and let me just go ahead and click on a purchase order. And let's say I also have a purchase order open and also have an estimate open, and then also have a, an invoice open. So what ends up happening is you have all these windows and they're kind of a mess because they're sort of behind each other on top of each other. See that? That will make it very difficult to navigate. So this open window list here on the left, what well, it makes it really easy because you can just quickly go to the window you want. So you can click enter bill. And then under this view, you can just uh, click on the maximize button and just have it maximized. And then you don't have to worry about making it smaller or bigger just because you're going to have the open window list here. So that's a really important uh, navigation piece. Right? Before we get started with QuickBooks, it's important to know that that's there. Now, if you like the left um, icon bar, I'm going to click here, left icon bar, and you click on this little tiny icon here. Where is it? Um, this one, open windows. 
it's going to be a little bit similar than that left navigation bar. If I expand it, you're going to see it here. It's a lot bigger. And for some people, that's better because it's easier to read. But I think it takes a lot more real estate. But what's nice is that um, even while it's collapsed, and you see that big label that, that says open windows, I can click that and briefly open it and switch. See that? I can quickly switch um, across um, different windows. So I like that very much. Now, it's really important to know that the escape key in QuickBooks will close a window. So I don't have to go all the way to this little X here to close, although that's a way to close. So I'm gonna click on that X that closes the window. Be careful not to hit the big X or the X all the way in the top. That will close QuickBooks altogether. Anyway, so I'm gonna keep, keep uh, pressing escape and I just keep uh, closing the windows and showing the window that's right behind it. However, if you just wanna close every single window all in one shot, just click on window, close all, and that will get rid of it and just get you into a completely gray and blank screen, which I like a lot. I like that very much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, expand that navigation bar again. So these are sort of the, the most basic uh, navigation tips of QuickBooks. It's important to kind of get accustomed to that before actually starting to create transactions. Uh, a couple other things, um, keyboard shortcuts. So if you click on any of these um, menus here, so I click on the edit menu, for example, you're gonna see a button there called uh, use register. So by seeing use register there, you see control R next to it, or for example, find control F next to it. So it's giving you sort of a hint of um, that you can use a keyboard shortcut. If I go to the list menu, for example, you see the chart of accounts has a control A shortcut, but the item list does not. So there isn't a control I or something that can get you to the item list. However, that I mentioned control I, control I actually gets you into an invoice. Now, don't despair if there's a, if there's a, a, a transaction there that you would love to have a keyboard shortcut to that you don't actually see the control letter next to it. Uh, you actually can access almost every, not every, but almost every function in QuickBooks using the Alt key. So for example, if I wanted to get to the item list, which has no keyboard shortcut with the control menu, I can actually follow if you see under L, the L is um, highlighted or it's underlined, and then you see the I is it's underlined. Basically that says that if I hit the Alt key and then I hit L first, that's gonna open the list menu. And then if I hit I, it's gonna open the item list, okay? So that's kind of an interesting shortcut to know. Alt L I will open the item list. Just like for example, if I wanted to open my vendor center, which doesn't have a control letter shortcut, uh, customer center does, control J gets me to the customer center, but the vendor center does not have one. But if I hit O and then V, so Alt O V opens up the vendor center. So it's another really kind of interesting shortcut to know, hit escape, close all windows. All right, that's the first lesson, setting up a new QuickBooks file and basic navigation.